are going to start with topic and the name of the topic is aeration okay so let us start with what the aeration means okay so what you are going to learn in this particular topic is what is aeration why do we require aeration what are the objectives of aeration what are different types or different methods of aeration okay so let us start with the first question that what is exactly aeration is okay so the aeration process is one of the important unit operations of water treatment plant okay for gas transfer okay it means that when you bring water in contact with air okay so what happens is exchange of gases takes place okay so the next question is what exactly happens in aeration process so in aeration process water is brought in contact with air so that water will absorb oxygen that is present in air and it will remove gases like carbon dioxide and h2s that is hydrogen sulfide okay let us move towards the third question that is what is working principle of aeration okay so the principle of aeration is to create a thin layer of water so that air diffusion can easily occur when air and water are brought in contact with each other okay so next question that might arise in your mind why is it useful okay so aeration is used for removal of taste and odor that are caused by gaseous impurities okay and moreover one of the important objective of aeration is to reduce the corrosive nature of water okay so when we are transporting water from the source to the treatment plant or when we are distributing the water from treatment plant to the distribution network okay if the water will have corrosive nature then what will happen is it will corrode the interior surface of the conduit or the pipeline okay so aeration is required for reduction of the corrosive nature understood so let us now start with the objective of aeration okay so the first objective of aeration is to increase the dissolved oxygen okay so when you bring water in contact with air the oxygen present in air will get dissolved in water as a result the dissolved quantity of oxygen in water will increase okay next is that it will remove taste and odor the taste and odor that are present because of organic decomposition will be removed okay next is hydrogen sulfide gas gets removed and as a result the foul odor of hydrogen sulfide also gets removed okay next is carbon dioxide gets reduced and ph gets increased okay carbon dioxide in water is responsible for corrosive nature okay so corrosive nature of water will reduce if carbon dioxide in water is reduced right and also because of aeration the increase in ph will take place okay next is that because of the aeration process carbon dioxide is removed up to 70 to 90% okay moreover 
aeration process is responsible for converting the soluble salts of iron and manganese into insoluble precipitates right as a result the salts which were soluble and which are present in water they will be removed as insoluble precipitates okay so this is why aeration is needed okay next is because of the aeration process constant agitation of water takes place right and as a result bacteria may be killed up to certain extent understood so these are the objectives of the aeration okay let us now move towards which are the different methods of aeration so the first one is the spray nozzles okay second one is by permitting water to trickle over cascade third one is by air diffusion and the fourth one is by using trickling bed understood let us have a look at the classification of aerators actually in all these methods contact between air and water is made either by formation of small drops or thin layers or by means of formation of small air bubbles okay based on these methods of aeration there are different types of aerators so let us have a look at the classification of aerators okay so the classification of aerators first one is the free fall aerators in free fall aerators there are four different types of aerators first one is the cascade aerators second one is the inclined apron aerators third one is the slat tray aerators and fourth one is trickling bed or gravel bed aerators okay then the another type of aerator is spray aerators and last one is air diffuser basins okay so these are the different types of aerators that are usually used in water treatment plants understood let us now move towards the first one that is the cascade aerator okay so as you can see on the screen the picture shows the cascade aerators okay this in this aerator the water is allowed to fall freely without any kind of pressure or head okay so this type of aerators are known as free fall aerators okay in cascade aerators there are usually series of steps preferably 3 to four steps are present okay and these steps are usually made up of concrete or metal sheets okay the carbon dioxide removal efficiency is usually 50 to 60% okay so water will enter through the center okay from here okay and it will fall freely over the steps and it will get in contact with the air and exchange of gases will take place and pure water or the aerated water will flow to the next unit understood so this is how the cascade aerator works okay so let us now move towards the second type of aerator and that is the inclined apron aerator okay so here as shown in the figure the inlet and outlet are at different elevation there is a slope or the slant surface provided in between the inlet trough and the outlet trough okay on the slant or the sloping surface there we have provided rifle or the plates okay so what will happen is when the water will be flowing through the inlet or through the surface or the inclined surface right the sheet of water will get in contact with the rifles or the plates okay so what will happen is there will be breaking up of the water 
and as a result the water will get thoroughly mixed with air okay and the exchange of gases will take place okay so this is the picture of inclined apron aerators okay you can see clear so let us now move towards the slate tray aerators okay so slate tray aerators are usually two type of aerators that is either they are circular or square in structure okay so the basic principle of slate tray aerator is that in the bottom of the aerator there is presence of blower okay and the blower will blow the air into the aerators on the top there is an inlet chamber okay the water which is to be aerated is allowed to enter through this inlet chamber okay this inlet chamber is connected to distributors okay and distributors are connected with the nozzles these nozzles will spray the water on the staggered slate trays okay there are layers of trays which are arranged in staggered arrangement okay they are staggered arrangement okay so when the water will flow in the downward direction right the air will be blowing in the upward direction right so the air and water will get in contact with each other and as a result what will happen is the exchange of gases will take place the aerated water will be collected at the bottom okay and the air will be disposed from the air outlet understood so this is how the slat tray aerator works understood students let us now move towards the next type of aerator that is the trickling bed aerator okay so in trickling bed aerator there are usually three to four trays present and each tray has coke at the bottom and below the coke there are perforations for removal of the water okay so as you can see over here right what happens is the water is first entered into the distribution tray and from distribution tray the water is allowed to pass through the layers of the coke okay so for example first water will enter into the distribution tray right then it will be sprinkled on the coke layer then it will pass through the coke layer then it will again sprinkle on the coke layer below on the below tray right and similarly after coming out of this aerator the water which you will obtain will be aerated water clear the vertical distance if i talk about the vertical distance between the tray then it is usually 0.5 meter okay and thickness and the thickness of bed is 0.5 to 0.6 meters okay so in this method carbon dioxide efficiency removal is very high okay it is the most efficient for carbon dioxide removal understood so let us now have a look at the spray aerator so as you can see on the screen so on the screen you can see is the spray aerators okay so water is sprinkled in the air through the nozzles okay and nozzles will break the water into droplets and carbon dioxide removal is 90% okay with the help of spray aerators you get 90% removal of carbon dioxide understood let us now move towards the next type of aerator that is air diffusion aerators okay so you can see over here that there are there is a series of pipes located at the bottom of the tank 
okay the tank is usually 3 to 5 meters of depth okay and here you can see they they have placed diffusers okay so that when the water will flow in these pipelines the water will be diffused in this tank with the help of diffuser as a result aeration will take place okay sometimes in place of diffuser they usually use perforated pipelines okay so in this treatment taste and odor producing gases are removed and oxygen is supplied to the water okay so this is how air diffusion takes place okay so this was about the different types of aerators and how aeration works understood